Hey everybody, Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon coming at you today with a few pro revenge stories. First one, I was recently privy to this email conversation from a friend who is a tabletop RPG developer. Let's jump right in. Names and details have, of course, been changed. From Chris to Tom. Subject, cancelled orders, help! To whom this may concern, I am inquiring personally about new popular RPG, which was recently released by Big Explosions. We have placed several orders for large quantities of this title due to high demand, and each time we place it, we receive the below attached message that our order unfortunately had to be rejected. I understand this may be a glitch in your system of some sort, but I would be very appreciative if you could resolve this so we can order this title. Yours, Chris. Owner, Big Down Home RPG Game Store. From Tom to Chris. CC, Big Explosions Publishing Staff, including OP. Subject, regarding cancelled orders, help. Hi Chris, it's been a long time. I don't know if you remember me, but I actually grew up in hometown and frequented your store through middle school and high school. Your store and the games we played made an incredible impression on me and influenced my career path. It made me want to write and develop role-playing games, which led me to start Small Indie Gaming Co. and move out here to Seattle and collaborate with other developers and develop it. You might recall, back in 2016, that New Popular RPG was initially released as an indie title called New Less Popular RPG. We fronted the costs on publishing and marketing and sought out game stores in the Northwest United States to playtest our games. I, however, never forgot your kindness and those years spent in the back room of your store playing Magic the Gathering and D&D. So I took a 16 hour road trip to show up at your store and personally ask you if you would be interested in selling it on your shelves upon release. At that time, you told me that you only had room for big titles and that you couldn't accept every indie RPG developer that knocks on your door. I then offered to send you free copies of the title to sell for 100% profit, because honestly, I just wanted to have my own RPG on the shelves in the store that was so important to my youth. But you laughed. You laughed. Laughed and told me again that you only had room for big titles, that the RPG industry was really cutthroat, and that you didn't have room for even one copy of my book. Last year in 2018, I was privileged to merge with and acquire the much larger Big Explosions Publishing and all of its titles. We are sincerely blessed to be able to share the love of RPGs internationally. And this year, we re-released my game as New Popular RPG with a half million dollar marketing campaign that has been incredibly successful. In conclusion, Chris, you are free to order absolutely any title from the Big Explosions distribution list. There are many to choose from. However, the distributor has been given strict instruction not to distribute new popular RPG to your store. I am sure there are much bigger titles that can fill your shelves. Yours most sincerely, Tom, Director, Big Explosions Gaming. The owner of that store is an absolute jerk, and while I can kind of see the point of not wanting to put something indie in their store, they really didn't have to be that much of a jerk about it. I can only imagine the sense of satisfaction that Tom had writing that email. Ah, to feel that someday. On to our second story. Demand proof of illness? Hope you have eye bleach. Let's jump right in. I had a boss one time who was such a control freak that she demanded to know specifically why I was calling out sick, wildly illegal where I live, one day. And for reference, I'm typically the guy who never gets sick, so it wasn't an attendance issue. I told her I think I had food poisoning. Turned out to be true, and actually wrote a ULPT based off this story a while back. And she kept pressing me as to explain what my symptoms were and why I couldn't make it in, all via text. I had finally had enough and was like, look, I'm not physically capable of working today and you are not allowed to ask me personal questions about illness and medical history. She threatened me with a write-up if I couldn't specifically explain or prove why I couldn't make it into work. This is where the pro-revenge comes in. 
I was about to send her something horrific that she could not unsee, and she wouldn't be able to do jack poop about it, since she technically asked for it. Being that I was living in the bathroom for more than two days, this inquiry was day one, and had aggressive diarrhea every 15 to 30 minutes, and the worst abdominal pain I've ever experienced. I lost my poop, har har, and took a pretty disturbing picture of me painting the bowl brown right before I flushed, and sent it to her. No joke, it looked like I power washed the inside of the toilet with feces and built a turd island in the middle of the water. It honestly looked like a poop volcano had erupted. I had no idea your bowels could contain so much. This is happening every 15 to 30 minutes, and I haven't been able to leave the bathroom for the last 6 hours. Here is your proof. Check the timestamp. Also sent a screen of the timestamp. I'll let you know as soon as I can if I'll be in tomorrow. So after 3 days off, I show up for my shift sleep deprived and sore from sleeping in my bathtub or on the floor for two and a half days, butthole not having any of it. But I was finally through the worst. She immediately escorts me into her office where our regional HR rep is waiting for me and we all sit down. He has paperwork in front of him and is discussing the incident with me and gets me to acknowledge what I did and that sending unprovoked and offensive content to coworkers constitutes harassment and blah 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 right before he asks me to sign a final write-up. If you do something like this again, you're fired. Before signing, I asked him, did she tell you why I sent this? He was dumbfounded and said, this isn't really excusable and basically handed me a screenshot printout of the text messages where this bitch deleted everything in the exchange in her phone but me saying, sorry, but I need to take a sick day today, and the picture. I laughed and handed him my phone and said here is the full exchange. He asked me to leave and give them a few minutes. About 10 minutes later he calls me in, by myself, and explained what I already knew. That she was the harasser and that she had aggressively violated privacy laws and would be dealt with, and to call him if anything like this ever happens again. I found out from one of the assistant managers that she ended up getting a final written notice and was super close to being fired, and it prevented her from getting a big promotion that she was being looked at for. So if you ever come across a poop head boss who wants to play doctor and question your sick leave, send them diarrhea pics and they'll either STF you or give you lawsuit material. I can confirm that when I'm not feeling good, I might not make the best decisions. But OP, you made a wonderful decision and I'm glad it came out in your favor. One has to wonder though, was your boss really that stupid? She didn't even think that you'd still have your side of that text conversation? I just don't get that. On to our third story, Avenged My Father. Let's jump right in. So this started when my parents went to buy a new car from their favorite Dodge dealership. The dealership had recently changed hands, but all the salespeople, for the most part, were still there. They got all set up to buy the new car, had a fantastic deal on the table, asked to drive the car for the evening, left their car that they were going to trade in as collateral. Well, they get back the next day, and the deal had totally changed. The dealer said something about new deals that day, changing the previous deal so they couldn't honor it. My dad was pissed. He stormed out of there screaming and cursing. Fast forward a few years to me and my baby daddy looking for a new car for him. My dad warns us not to go to a redacted dealer. They are scam artists and will not honor their word. Unfortunately, in my town, this guy owns just about every major dealership in a 30 mile radius and all the biggest brands. So, baby daddy wants a Honda, so we just suck it up and drive to the nearest one which, unfortunately, is a redacted dealer. Things go well at first, the guy is friendly, he lets us test drive, shows us all the cool features, we finally settle on one with upgraded features that's like 26k, but it's a holiday sale so it's down to 22k. We tell them we want to trade in my Nissan Juke, which is valued at 11k, but I still owe 10k. That's where things go downhill. 
the first offer they have the audacity to only offer 7k. I'm like hard pass, goodbye. But they are like wait, what if we pay off your car? Do we have a deal then? And the sales dude sticks out his hand like that will seal the deal. I refuse to shake it, but accepted to see what they come up with. He comes back having raised the trade in to 10k, but he also raised the price of the car to the original price, so we weren't saving any money in the end. When I pointed that out, he was like, what? No way. Like I was stupid or something. So we left. Because it was some shady business practices. If he had just been honest and upfront with me, we probably would have bought that car. So we did a little research and tried to find a Honda dealership that wasn't a redacted dealer. We found one over an hour away that on Google just said Honda cars of suburb in another state. I do live relatively close to a state line in the USA. When we got there, lo and behold, there's redacted all over the windows and walls. I wanted to leave immediately, but baby daddy didn't want to have wasted the gas, not to mention the babysitter time for our infant daughter, so we stayed. The first thing I said to the sales guy was, is this really a redacted dealership? It doesn't say that anywhere on Google. He was like, oh, yeah, heh, sorry. Anyway, what can I do for y'all? So I said we are here to buy a car, this car. I described the car we picked out last time. Any color but red, we are trading in my juke, won't take less than what I owe on it. So they come at us with the 26k price tag. And I'm like, WTF? The other dealer did 22k, and they said nope. So I said fine, buy, but baby daddy said no, let's just buy it. So we did. We get to the room with the finance guy, and my dad always taught me to make them throw in gap insurance before I sign anything. So I say, okay, fine. We will take this deal if you throw in gap insurance. And I didn't even get the word insurance out of my mouth before this creepy, perfectly white-toothed douchebag finance guy literally sticks his hand in my face and says, we don't do that, in a loud, booming voice. As a woman, I was terrified, but I still managed to squeak out something along the lines of, that's a lie. Like, honestly, what kind of car dealership doesn't offer gap insurance? Then he goes, ma'am, don't question my integrity. At that point, I just stopped. Well, since baby daddy was the one buying the car, I just shut up, let him sign his life away, except I wouldn't let him buy any add-on packages from that douchebag, and got up and left when he was done. They kept my car and we drove home in his new one. A couple days later they paid off my juke. Thanks for the credit score boost. But then they started blowing up our phones. They started sending letters every day. Apparently, one of the things baby daddy signed was a right to buy the juke. But he didn't have the rights to sell that car. I did. They need me to sign because without my signature, they don't have my permission to sell my car. Technically, because I didn't sign that paper, the car is still mine. Their calls and letters have been begging me to come back down to sign, or to go out of my way on one of my days off, or on a lunch break, to find and pay a notary for their screw-up. Yeah, no, I don't think so. So now they have a car they put 10k into, that they needed to sell fast, because the value just keeps dropping. Soon, it will be worth less than what they paid for it. And it will just sit there forever because Redacted is nothing but a building full of rude jerks. The comments on this story are scathing and I highly recommend going and taking a look at them. There's a link in the description below. This OP is going to get screwed in the end. There is a lawsuit coming and OP seems to be very blind to that fact. OP, this is not something you can let fester. Get in touch with that dealership immediately and get this worked out. At a bare minimum, you'd be looking at a lien on your new vehicle for the value of the old one, and also possible fraud charges. I want to thank all three OPs for posting their stories to the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.